Well, hello there, Real Gamers. RetroRob here, and welcome to RetroRob Plays Everything. I'm back from the Midwest Gaming Classic, so you know what that means. It's time for a haul video. Overall, uh, prices held pretty steady this year. I thought software, by, by software I just mean game prices, were a little bit lower this year than they have been in previous. Uh, they were comparable to eBay prices pretty much across the board except on really high-end stuff like really high-end collector stuff seemed to be quite a bit higher but if you're just looking for something standard it really wasn't too bad uh the other thing was that hardware prices seem to be up quite a bit uh from previous years that's again that's just me looking around for stuff that i'm looking for so i don't know what your experience is feel free to tell me down below uh but i definitely picked up more this year than i did last year last year was almost a mini haul Anyway, let's get going with what I got. And here we have Drunk Imposters. And this is by Second Layer Productions, LLC. And uh, they stopped by the room because they felt that maybe a group called Guys Games of Beer might like a, a card game called Drunk Imposters. But anyway, this is kind of interesting because it combines with other games. It's the cards that changed everything. We raised the bar and made the new standard for party games. Combines with any game. Hilarious and raunchy, yet you can still show your face the next day. Changes players that aren't good at games into a force to be reckoned with. Ruins that person's night that usually wins at everything. Yay, I'm going after Larry. Anyway, looks pretty darn interesting. No, I didn't get the Final Fantasy DS at the Midwest Gaming Classic. I did, however, get this. Uh, if you've been at the Midwest Gaming Classic, you've probably heard Brian's music either in the G2B room or on the big stage as well. He does a bunch of covers of the Final Fantasy music and other video game music, of course. Uh, he's well known for that. He's also well known for being uh, the guitarist for Lords of the Trident. Uh, just an amazingly great guy. And... Uh, yeah, see, I'm the love of his life. I just thought you should know that. And here we have Karurin Paradise, which I got for five bucks. Who says there's never a deal at cons anymore? And it is complete in the box. There we go. It's a puzzle game. I think it's a little bit like Irritating Stick. I've only heard about it like on YouTube videos, but uh, I cannot believe I found this. Look at that. It's in very nice shape. So, uh, can't wait to check this one out. Fortunately, I have no text I can read you because this game never left Japan. Friday night, I had the absolute pleasure of spending a couple hours with E.M. McCraner, who played Angus in Kasumi Ninja, of all things, on the Atari Jaguar. Um, he is really amazing. I mean, we, I'm not kidding. We were just sitting there talking about philosophy, a little bit of anything, uh, and he actually did write a book, Fighting With Myself, and I'll put a link to it down below. Uh, I've read, I've only gotten about 15 to 20 pages in, but I'm glad to say that his conversational style is in here, and he is really, I, I do not get a lot of time to talk to people at conventions, because I'm usually buried, so it was really nice to spend some actual quality time with somebody, and uh, I gotta say, he did not disappoint at all, so definitely check out his book, but conversationally, he sounds a lot like he does in this book, which is really cool. It's World of Final Fantasy by Square Enix. And uh, it was an absolute unplanned purchase, but looks pretty good in there. And it is one of those Vita games that I don't have. Capture, customize, and evolve. With the power to become both tall and small, Rin and Lan are led to the world of Grimoire by a mysterious figure to rediscover their past and save the future. Pretty typical Final Fantasy stuff, but it looks really nice. So, haven't tried it. Let me know what you think of that one. Since it was a blind purchase. Next we have Harvest Moon Sky Tree Village for the 3DS. These were all kind of just impulse buys. And it's in pretty good shape as well as the manual. Revive the Land, Save a Village. Features new and easy farming mechanics. Upgraded tools, terraforming, and a new animal. The Poitou, <laughs> the Poitou Donkey, what the hell? Anyway, 
play as a boy or a girl, interact with a new cast of characters, get married, start a family. And uh, next we have Wrecked Ralph. And uh, this isn't quite what I thought it was. I thought it was like a remake of that arcade hack. Uh, so I kind of hoped it would be like a platformer, but it's not. But that's what I get. Just buying stuff. So hopefully it's halfway decent. Help Ralph earn the wreck ignition he deserves before it's game over. Play as powerful Ralph or Handy Felix. Venture through exciting worlds inspired by the film. I do. <laughs> it's a good dad joke. Nice. Nice job. All right. Uh, next, this is another impulse buy, but it's not one that came without precedent because I wanted one of these for the longest time. And this is a Game Boy Advance game. I first saw these in a magazine years ago uh, that was talking about Japanese uh, releases and showing how they're packaged. And look at this thing. It's just beautiful. Just beautiful. I might open it up and play it one of these days, but uh, I just like the packaging so much. But anyway, it is Super Star Soldier, or Star Soldier, and uh, unfortunately, it's, uh, you know, all Japanese, so I can't read it to you, but yeah, this is nice. I really like this. Next, is this going to fit? Yes, it is. Retroware, Love 3. Um, I covered Love, the original one, on this channel very, very early in its existence. And uh, I plan to do this one. I'll, I'll probably cover this particular release because it's pretty interesting. 25 levels of precision platforming, and this is a pure platformer. Control 5-8 as you make your way across challenging levels filled with deadly obstacles, using only your wits and your checkpoints to survive. And it includes every level from Love, Love Remastered, Love 2, Kuso, and the original 2007 version. And I believe I played all of them. So not bad. Look at that packaging. Beautiful. All right. This is, this is not the last thing on the Atari front. But uh, Frogger 2 3 Deep. Been trying to get this for years. Uh, the price wasn't too outrageous. I talked him down a little bit. So I picked it up. If you're thinking this might be on Sorry Atari soon, you're guessing right. Oh, one other thing. Uh, Jerison came by to visit, and he said, Hey, how'd you like that copy of Monster Bash HD I sent you? And I said, What copy? Apparently, he sent me a key for it months ago, uh, but I didn't see it. I still don't see it. I went searching for it. But anyway, he resent it yesterday, and uh, I played a couple hours of it. And that's pretty cool. So thanks, Jerison. It's awesome. Nintendo was at the Midwest Gaming Classic, and all I got were these dumb erasers. No. <laughs> um, they were giving away free stuff, so I grabbed it. Got this kind of cool Switch bag. Uh, also got these patches. And it's right, a character eraser set. I actually thought that these were like stick covers at first. I grabbed them right away, and I'm like, oh, man, they're erasers. And then there's some Mario cards. I do not know if these are NFC. I've been asked that a couple times. So sorry. If you've got yours opened yet and you know, let me know in the comments down below. All right, and I got one more thing, which is really two things. All right, these last two games were given uh, by Xavier, and we're going to mention him a little bit more on the Guys Games and Beer show. We're going to have him on and have him talk about his process for this. But he actually gave us a number of cartridges, uh, both for the Jaguar and the Sega Genesis. And he actually takes like unwanted games, like sports games and such. And then he puts unreleased or homebrew ROMs into them and makes these. And I think they look great. Look at that. Uh, these games actually got a lot of play at the Midwest Gaming Classic as well. So I'm going to put them back in the kit. So if you're like at any of our future shows, these games will be there. Uh, so you can check them out. Also, I'll probably do a gameplay on these because darn interesting stuff, right? And uh, hopefully once I get him on the Guys, Games, and Beer show, I will get a decent link for him because we've got almost nothing on him. Uh, but at least we got some contact information so we can get to him. So it'll happen. Hang in there. And that's it.
for my Midwest Gaming Classic 2024 haul. If you got something great there, let me know about it. Also, if there's anything in here that you like or thought was particularly interesting, also let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and uh, whatever else. Ring that dumbbell. I'll see you in a couple days. Bye.